Hi everybody, it's Simon Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is was going to be my last tutorial, but I think there's going to be one more which I've already recorded, which will go out as well. So this is the last physical one I have filmed um, for this year's Christmas workshop. And these I've been putting off and putting off and putting off because I've been racking my brain. I've wanted to try and do a Christmas tree gift box for since last year's Christmas workshop. And I've just not quite, not quite got it right or there's something I've not been happy with. And I've just thought, right, I'm just going to go for it and I'm going to, you know, share the tutorial and, and see how you guys, you know, feel about it and what you, whether you like it and stuff. So I'm always a bit dubious sometimes when I, you know, create these odd shapes. But this is what I've come up with. So this is my small Christmas tree. Now this is perfect for table favours or very small little gifts, special piece of jewellery, things like that. And this is using one sheet of A4 or letter paper. The box here, this is just a cube, but you can make it as an actual, you know, little gift box as well. So there's two gift boxes, but I'll show you how to do all of that. So that's that style. And then this one here uses two pieces of A4 or letter paper. And again here, this is a two by two cube. And again, it can be a gift box as well. And basically they are uh, joined together at the top with a peg. But I'm going to be also adding sellotape to this because it's a gift box. So there'll be a bit of sellotape just to kind of keep it in place. The peg does hold it there, but it may pop. It opens up and you do have quite a roomy gift box inside. So you imagine when it all comes in, you've got this kind of space here. It's quite a wide because these side bits here actually go out. So it actually becomes quite a wide gift box. So it's quite deceiving and you can fit a lot in this. So I've got this one and the one I'm going to make with you, which I'm already, I've got my gifts ready for. So they're ready to go and then these ones here I think are going to be our table place favours and I may well put people's names on the front of this and they will be in front on the placemat in front of everybody so I love them I'm really really pleased with them so that is what we are finishing ish nearly this year's Christmas workshop on so I do hope you like them as always I have really tried to break everything down so you know, don't be think, you know, looking in a minute when I show you the templates and be like, oh my God, there's loads of scoring. There kind of is, but it's really, really straightforward. So I've already gone ahead and I've used the Dovecraft mirrored uh, card stock, which I've got. This is the rose gold. Oh yeah, I've got this, this one here, premium mirrored card. It's really nice actually. I don't know, it's got a really smooth finish to it. Some of them you can, I don't know, you just, yeah, I really like this one. So I've got the rose gold, gold and this is the silver which I've used today but again all those links will be in my blog but I've just used some hot glue and I've attached my pegs to the back okay so that's really easy to go and do so I've done a big medium and small for the larger gift box and then just the medium and small for the smaller one now I'm going to show you how to make both sizes because I figured that some people some people may just want to do the gift bag size which is this larger one others may just want to do little favors or just need that smaller style and you know what they just look nice as well those two kind of sat together they'd look nice just on see what I mean it pops you've got to put sellotape on it but they would look nice just on the mantle so they are a nice little decorative piece as well. Okay, so let's do the larger one first. So that's my smaller template. This is the larger one. So not too much scoring. Like I said, it, it is straightforward. So I'm gonna keep that one here. Let's pop them to one side just so you can see everything. And then I can kind of, you know, revert to that as we go through this scoring. So I've got two of these and these are A4 size. So 11 and three quarters, 11 and five eighths by eight and um, a quarter. But if you've got letter paper, which is eight and a half, that's fine. Just trim it down to eight and a quarter, but your length will be 11. That's fine. All right. I'm going to show you. All it will mean is yours will be slightly shorter. So then you need a piece of red cardstock and this is going to be for the box gift box or cube underneath so first of all let's go through the scoring so with your card in the you know upright position if it's directional paper make sure it's facing up the right way first of all you're going to score at two inches okay all the way down and we're just doing this one here and you can see that I've just marked two inches and that's this line all the way down then you want to mark at eight inches and score and that will give you a little quarter inch tab and that's this one that I've just done okay then rotate the cardstock again the directional paper needs to be like this and score again at two 
that is your baseline. So whether you're using 11 inch, yours would be here. That's just the height now, all right? Everything you're scoring in your base and everything's at the bottom. That's that scoring. Then go back and pop it in the original place that it was. And we're gonna do these ones here. So we're gonna score at one and at five, but just down to seven and a half inches. So here I've got seven and a half. And it's just a rough guide. It doesn't matter if it's slightly out. It doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same. But there you go, I'm just going down to seven and a half. And then at five inches, again, just score down to seven and a half. Okay, so that's now all the scoring done with the scoreboard. Now you want to do that on two pieces of cardstock. So I'm going to just quickly go and do that on this one. Okay, so that's that one. Now what I'm going to actually do is do something a little bit different. Because usually when I do two sizes in a tutorial, I do one first and then I go and do the next. While we've got the scoreboard, pop those and that to one side. I'm now going to just do the scoring as well for the smaller one because I just think it's easier while I've got everything out. So this is if you want to do that smaller size. Okay, I'm just coming out there, but you can see all of the cardstock. So this is the template here. So this piece of cardstock needs to be 10 and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So again, everybody can make this one with standard car stock. Now, with it on the in the longest, um, along the long side, again, if you've got directional paper, make sure it's up the right way. But we're gonna be scoring at one and a half, three, uh, sorry, one and a half, and then five, six and a half, and 10. Okay, then rotate and score at one and a half. Okay, then rotate it back again into the original and we're gonna do those same kind of slightly like three quarters of a way down score lines, but this time you're gonna score down to five inches. So this time you're gonna do it at three quarters of an inch and you're gonna score down to five inches. Then at three and a quarter, down to five inches. Then at five and three quarters, again, down to five inches and then at eight and a quarter down to five inches. And again, they're just all, you know, one might be a little bit longer than the other, it really doesn't matter. All right, so that is all the scoring. Now these templates will be on my blogs. We're gonna do some other score lines now without the scoreboard. So I am now going to go back to this one and just do the one, I'll do that one off camera. So it's easier having this template because you can't really see the score lines on this one. But what we're gonna create now, so where we done this one, this one at five inches, for example, down to the seven and a half mark here, and then I've got that one there, which is that one there. From those score lines, we're gonna do these four score lines that all come out from that point, okay? So we're working the big one first. So we're gonna start from there, which in my case is here, with a metal ruler, and I'm just gonna score up to the corners, all four corners of the large rectangle. Ignore the tab and ignore your base here. You're just scoring all within this large rectangle. So there's my center or middle point as such on this one. Pop my stylus down first, always put your stylus down first and then score up to that other corner. Okay, and then while I've got my ruler in this position, I'm gonna then again pop my stylus down and then score down to that bottom right. And then I'll do the left here, so again, cross. And I'd say that's the thing, when you're doing this kind of faceted style, it's all about precision. It's about making sure you get really nice joins, all your points match up, because with any faceted style, you have these kind of sharp lines and these nice points here, and you know what I mean? That's what makes this. Um, so if these are slightly out, like if they don't all join, so what we're doing here now is we're creating this part here, okay? So I have now just scored that line, that line, that line, and that line all within this large rectangle. Now we're gonna work on this smaller rectangle here. So where I've done that two inch score line all the way down, which is this one here, this straight one, that's where I'm now working within. So again, I'm finding that score line here, so this one inch one which went down to there, you're gonna score out to all four of those corners of that large, tall side rectangle. So again, popping my stylus down first. And just really make sure, I mean, like I said, this is a very thick cardstock. 
I reckon this is about 280, 300 GSM. Um, but anything above 200, I had someone ask me um, the other day actually about weights of cardstock. And I would say for gift boxes and stuff, you want to just try and keep above 200. Um, or just generally for most paper crafting, even my cards and stuff I do. So, right, that is everything scored. So I'm going to go ahead and do them on that one as well in a minute. And then going back to this one, it's exactly the same thing, but we've got four here. Because obviously if you imagine there's one, if we cut it in half, that's one and there's one. So it's just the same as what we've done. But in this case now, it's all on one sheet. And you're just doing the same thing. So where you've scored all these straight lines just down to that five inch mark you're going to score out now all four points in each section so this one here if I pop it like that from here now I'm going to score up to there up to there down and down and you're doing you're always working within every rectangle so there's that small rectangle then this one will be in that big rectangle this will be in the small and this will be in the big. So I'm going to go and score them all. So look at it now as it is and then you'll see it in a minute all scored. Okay, so now you can see the difference with all those score lines. So at the end of each of those straight lines, you will have four other score lines. So here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's how you know you're going the right way. You should have one, two, three, four of the big rectangles. And then within each of those rectangles, you need your straight line that comes down to the five inch marker and then four score lines coming off. This will be on my blog, okay? So just keep this maybe on the screen next to you. So like I said, you shouldn't go wrong. It's all there. And I always say, do yourself a template as well. So maybe just get a bit of scrap copy paper and do that on it first, just so you can get kind of, you know, um, used to what you're kind of doing in, you know, with regards to the score lines. So, that's all of the scoring done. Now it's the fun part of burnishing and popping it together. We will do the cubes for each one at the end. I just want to carry on while I'm at this point um, with these. So I'm going to stick with this one. I'll do the big one in a minute. So just go ahead now and burnish all of the straight, I'd say like standard score lines. So I'm just going to do my baseline and then just go along and do, uh, not that one, it was that one there, it was lucky. The ones that go right the way through. And then you've got those small tabs on the end. They are a bit fiddly, but you don't want the bulk on this because we're actually going to be cutting a bit out in a minute anyway. Okay, so I've done all the main kind of straight through score lines. Now we need to start kind of working in these ones. Starting with all these little triangles first on the bottom. You just want to kind of pinch, pinch it like so. And again there. Okay, now you do want a good cardstock for this because you are going to be folding in one way and then folding back in another way. It's just the nature of the style, so this card doesn't crack. So if you've got a cardstock that you know is prone to cracking, I wouldn't use it because you're just going to get frustrated. So try and stick with something that is good quality. So you can see there, as I've been chatting, I've just been going along and just working those. And basically, this short one that we scored down to five will be in the end it's going to be a valley fold so it's folding inside and then these are actually mountains so you can see there um, it's going to end up that's going to be pushed in when we go to do it but that will still be a valley fold but for the minute you just want to work them like so so now I'm going on to the next the bigger section and again just start with the triangles at the bottom first and that will help with everything else. And you just want to make sure you get a really nice sharp score lines. So again, that one there, and then that one just starts to kind of naturally kind of go in. So again, just these, like I said, these score lines that don't go all the way down, they are going to be valley folds. So if you stick with them as valleys, these two bits will join up. And can you see now already that's starting to form the front of our Christmas tree? Okay. So I'm just going to go along and do the other two sections there. Okay, so now you can really see all those faceted sides and it does slowly start to come together. Now, once we cut along the bottom, you'll find it will probably make it easier as well to really work those folds in a bit more. So with this shorter strip along the bottom, you just want to cut up each one just to that score line. 
okay and then just take little wedges off of your tab there at the top of the bottom but now because you've got kind of freed up that you can find that you, you can really kind of work those bottom triangles in a bit better so just really get down to the score lines there by doing spending the time on this bit now will really make a difference when we come to stick the side together and it kind of just fall into its shape so again just do them like so all right so that is we're almost there then back to these ones here so you'll have two pieces of the bigger one get rid of my templates now you're just doing exactly the same thing so i'm going to burnish the main big score lines at first so that one and just the tab on the short side long side sorry and then just that one on the base okay and then we'll cut up so this is the base you can see there's your side there's our little quarter inch tab you're working on there and you should just have one score line here on your left which will form your two by two square come along and there'll be this tiny bit here just cut up there and again take a little wedge out of the tab and take another wedge out of there and then just work in those other score lines so again just folding that one there work the triangles yeah do the base triangles first it's always easier actually if you do those like I said before and then I don't do what I say <laughs> And just it's all about getting those points and again just work that one there and then those ones everything will burnish so there's there's you know don't panic and think it's not you just got to really get these points all joining up nicely so again now when we bring that in can you see it's going to bring and form the front of that one along with that there Okay, so right now you should have two pieces like this if you're working on the larger one and one piece if you're working on the smaller one. Now we will move on to our kind of cubes, the boxes for the bottom. So grab my scoreboard. And for the large one, you're going to need a piece that is eight and a quarter by six and a half. And for the smaller one, you'll need a piece that's six and a quarter by five. So with the large one here, so along the eight and a quarter inch side, you want to score at two inches, four, six, and eight. Then rotate and score at two, four, and six. So on one side, you'll have a half inch tab, and on the other side, you'll have a quarter inch tab. If you're doing the smaller one, so along the six and a quarter inch side, you want to score at one and a half, three, four and a half and six rotate your cardstock and score again at one and a half three and four and a half and again on one you'll have a half an inch and on the other you will have a quarter inch if you want to just make this a cube and you don't want it to open you don't need this piece so you would actually only need four and a half by six and a quarter if you're doing the small and again if you didn't want yours to have a gift box opening, you will just need this to be six by eight and a quarter. Okay, that half an inch is going to be your closure to open and close the cube. So again, I'm trying to show you two ways to, you know, have the box because you may not want it to have a gift in. So again, that's all of the scoring. So depending on what size you're working on, you just want to go ahead and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, now depending on what size you're going to work on, um, sorry, it doesn't matter what size you're working on, the cutting is the same. You see, all it is is a smaller version of that. So I'm going to show you how to cut and put together one, and then the other one you'll just do exactly the same way. So again, I'm just trying to find ways to keep the video short, but get all the information across. So with the half inch tab at the top and the quarter inch tab on the right hand side, you're going to cut up these four score lines. So one, two three and four and you're cutting all up to just that first score line there okay with this little bit on the end you just want to cut out completely and then while we're on the side go along and cut this next score line here but just literally that tiny bit turn around again and then that 
quarter piece you want to cut all the way out. So now we've got this little tab which will be what puts the side of the box together and then you want to go along these score lines and again this time you're cutting past that first one down to the second. So again here, down and then down. Okay, then and you're going to do exactly that on that one remember. Then go back down to the bottom again and let me just remember which one I want to do this on. So that's going to be the back. Okay, so this first one, you're going to take your wedge out of each side, like so. Then you want to miss that one, because that's going to be the last piece we stick down. And it would just mean you get a nice, kind of neat finish to your cube. And then take another couple of wedges out the next one, and then some more wedges. Because all these pieces are going to be stuck on top of each other, you're bound to get bits hanging out. Whereas if you just cut the edges off like this, I just lie it down, you can see. So this one stays in its square form, but the others you've taken wedges out of. You don't have to be exact, it doesn't matter. Then again, let me just check. Okay, flip it around. Now, if you want to make it a gift box, you want to take this one out. So now we've got that tab on the left-hand side. It will be the one, two, third one in from the left. I'm going to remove, because I'm going to make this one into a gift box, just to obviously show you, but you're going to remove that whole one. Now, if you obviously aren't, you will not have this piece here and you will just cut down each one. Okay, so I've removed that one and then with these here, I'm just going to hold it all up in a second, you're going to cut just half off again, don't have to be too too exact and then you just want to take smaller little wedges off, not too much just a little bit because you want there to be a little bit of bulk to help the lid close inside like so. So now if I just bring that back around that's what you should have. So there's the bottom where we left that one square you've got those ones with all the wedges. Along the top I took half off of that one, removed that one completely, took half off of that one and this one just stays the same. Now what you can also do on this one is again take a very little amount off. I would First of all, do a tiny amount and then test the box when we put it together. But I've just taken two very small amounts off there. So that there is what you need to do if you are having it as a, obviously as a gift box to open and have something else inside. If not, you won't have this half on here anyway. And this top needs to just look like the bottom. So you'll have that piece and then you'd have exactly the same along the top. And that's just to have a completely closed cube. So again, hopefully I'm explaining this all. I know there's a lot to take in, but just take your time and break it all down. So I'm going to just go and do this now exactly the same, but actually I'm going to keep this as a cube. So I am now going to remove all of this. So like I said, remember this was only... Oh, crumbs. I didn't want to remove that one. It's all right. I've kept a bit on there. Let me just quickly cut this as if it's going to be a um, just a normal... this is the bit I just wanted to recklessly hack off <laughs> not the other side so yeah you just won't have on that's how it will be I've just gone and done that little tab and then I'll just cut down all of these exactly the same way as that okay so that's how it will look if it's just going to be a cube so see what I mean I said you just keep the top the same as the bottom so that one I've left square that one's square but all the rest have got little wedges taken out that's how this big one would look you just take off that half inch piece there all right, so hopefully that all makes sense. So let's put this one together first and then the other one's pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to, didn't take little wedges off of that. Okay, so just pop a bit of double-sided tape or wet glue as I'm using, like so. Fold it over, fold that side down and this side over. So you're just, you are just making a standard gift box for this. It's very, very straightforward like so and then this is going to come down obviously this is the front so that's why we've got that square that perfect square should be at the front just fold that up I'm going to fold the back one down and just focus on the outer score line there just pop a bit of glue I'm not 
again not worrying too too much stick that one down stick that one over I'm gonna go inside in a minute with my ruler and then this one will go over and cover everything and be nice completely flush with all four sides because we've kept it in that square form so if you turn it over just with your ruler you can really just go in and just push that all down okay and then with these pieces fold them in and now that should and you want it to wedge in you want it to almost lock itself close like so so now that's a nice hidden little box to have an extra gift in now when we go to stick this down i'll show you the best side to have it on because you still want that person to be able to get into it but you want it to still visually look nice so that's how to make the gift box style and then this one here i didn't burnish those school i thought i burnished all of my score lines but i hadn't let's just do those ones there so this one you put together exactly the same way but the two square completely square pieces will be the last ones you stick down on the front and on the top and the bottom so I've got a slightly hanging off tab here but it should all come together fold it over fold this one over so again putting it together exactly the same way and then all the ones that you've taken wedges out of they all go down first so do that one and then that last one I cut mine a bit short but we can hide that bit like so again turn it over she's my bone folder there and then there's the one that's got the square so again all the others just fold in and then just make sure you've got enough glue around the outer parts and then that last one will go right over the top and again see how it just conceals everything just hold that there because obviously you haven't really got anything to push against because it is a cube. So you're just pushing it in on itself. So don't, yeah, you don't want to squash it, but you just want to make sure it's all stuck down. So that is a cube style. And then obviously that's the gift box style. I think the gift box style works better for the bigger one because it's just a bit more easier to manage. But there's no reason why you can't obviously make that into one like I showed you. So keep them to one side while they are drying. Hopefully your ruler following this one okay so let's do let's do the big one so with your tab that tiny quarter inch tab you want to add some glue onto that one first so I'm just going along like so grab this one you want this one with the tab you basically you just want it facing up the right way kind of line down flat because it doesn't matter at this point because everything is burnished and line up the very bottom so it's completely straight because then all your score lines will all meet up and just join it right the way up so it becomes one continual piece so it actually just becomes a larger version of this if you imagine this middle line here is what we're actually sticking together now it's just a larger version so again hopefully things like that will just make it all make sense to you like so and then flip it over and then with the tab here the other quarter inch one okay fold that completely flat and this one if you're folding it along that full score line will lie completely flat and everything will meet up perfectly and you want it to the whole thing to lie flat and then you know it's not going to be wonky or kind of out of shape when we go to put it all together okay so that's what you should have so right now if you don't have everything you know back in its folded way it just kind of looks like this just like a box so let's now stick down no we need to do a bit of cutting so what you want to do is it's easiest to do I know it seems like it's a bit fiddly but it is easier to do this when it's all yeah like so so bring that one in actually it's just easier if I just do it this way I'm trying to make it harder than it needs to be so we need to remove the bulk if we didn't do this bit next the box wouldn't go together but you can see here I've got the V in fact the cutting I'm going to do on this one just ignore me for a minute let's put this one together because you can see it's so much better on this green cardstock than the pattern so with this one again pop your glue on your tab right all flat fold that one over and then fold that whole piece over exactly the same way that we did the large one so here 
this is where we've got that triangle which is that same again you just can't really see it but it's this triangle here all right we're going to cut into this and you're going to cut this just like you will the bigger bit but basically we need to remove a big chunk of this where you've got it here you don't want to go right up you want to come out a little bit so if i just start cutting and then you can see what i'm doing and then i'm just kind of coming down so i'm about an inch up from that cross kind of thing there and then again I'm kind of coming out about a quarter of an inch from the outer part there and then just come down and just join that up and don't worry if it's a little bit wonky again this is all going to be folded in but by taking that out you will still get once I fold this in because that will all go back in again you see now when that folds flat together you still get that lovely front of your Christmas tree, but without all that bulk, so you can get your gifts in. So again, go around to this side, come out about a quarter of an inch, one eighth of an inch, and come all the way down to roughly, um, you know, an inch up from that bit. It's not the end of the world if it's a slightly higher or slightly, you know, but you do want to kind of keep it roughly there. So you can see now how much we've removed. Because whatever you're putting in is going to be within this bottom bit here. So like I said, it is just for a small favour, small bit of jewellery. Then you want to do the same on this one. But again, come in from the top and come down there. And then that one there. Like so. So you can see what we're doing. I'm kind of getting these little like peaks now, these points but you want a little bit of a kind of area to them, otherwise we can't put our peg on and uh, stick it together and um, close it all up. Like so. So now that's what you should have. It looks really odd. Like I said, this is taking me a long time to get to this point. <laughs> you know, this is like a year in the making, so... Um, Again, I just hope you guys do like it. So wherever the back is, so this is my join, so that's going to be at the back. This is going to be the one that I stick down last. So I'm going to pop my base down first, grab my wet glue. And you're just sticking this down just like you would any other gift box. So again, just pop some glue and stick that side in. I didn't take wedges off of this. You can do if you've got anything. Mine isn't over, oh, it's overhanging a bit there. I can trim that. But that's why we take the wedges off. Because can you see there, I've got that bit overhanging, but... It's okay, I can live with that. Again, pop some more glue on that. Make sure it's all on the edges and then bring that one down. Okay, pop it on its side. I'm going with my ruler, just go in there and just make sure that's all nice and stuck down. Okay, while that's drying, I'm gonna do the same on this. I'm gonna still show you but at least now you've got more of an understanding. So I'm starting from this corner here. I'm coming out about a quarter of an inch and I'm just slowly coming down to again about an inch up from this one, even though it's bigger. I'm still going to go down about the same. And again, come down. This is when these long scissors come in handy because you can really get them down far without having to really get my hands in there. You notice I'm not really having to do too much the scissors are doing it all but can you see now so there's that same bit that we've done on that green one and now if I bring that in see how it's going to come together so I'm going to just finish that on this one okay so that's all the points again so you can see it looks just like this one and now we need to stick it all down so again they're both kind of your front and your back's the same on this because you've got two joins so just find whatever one you're happier with being your front and your back I'm going to have this as my front so again I'm going to stick that one down, pop some glue on that one. Okay, again, I am just going to take. Oh, well, I forgot to take the wedges off of this one. I'm just going to take a little wedge off of the outer one because that's all you're really going to see on this one. I feel really nervous doing this gift box. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I've, I think I've built it up so much in my head. I just want to make sure I'm really worried that I'm not getting it across but I pride myself on giving you you know easily um, easy to understand tutorials and I'm just panicking that this one's a bit more it is harder I'm not gonna lie obviously there is more to this one but I have had people ask saying can we can you do some more detailed intricate boxes and I've made lots of strange things over the years 
but I can't, they're not always teachable. Some things are just a bit too hard to teach um, and it really does need more of a one-to-one. -one. Um, so yeah, hopefully, like I say, it's okay. So that one's now ready to go. That's how it should look. I'm gonna leave that to one side with that one and let's put this one together. So this is the full cube. So you just wanna find your neatest kind of front. So there, I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna put glue on the top and then you just want to sit it do that one there perfectly in the middle of your base so just make sure it lines up with this this point here is in the middle of this box pop it like that it will be completely the same width as the base I'm just going to pop my ruler in there just to put some pressure on the top of that cube and just spend some time making sure that that is so you're going to stay there. You may want to put a bit of a weight inside that. You could put some sand in there beforehand if you wanted to keep these more as like an ornament because the sand will weigh it down and obviously make sure it always stands up. But that one now, you can see that's where that needs to be. Pop that to one side, go back to this one. So where you've got your piece that opens, like there, so that's my opening. You want it to obviously close it up. The closed side have away from you. Now, how did I do it? Yeah, so it's just, so that's still the front, but I'm gonna stick it like that. So you could have it that way if you want, but because that's the back that I folded, I want that really at the back. So whoever's looking at it can open it straight up then. You know what I'm saying, I'm probably not saying it as well as I'm actually just showing you. So once it's all stuck down, you'll be able to see it better anyway. Again, pop your glue on. It's the same width as the base, so just line it up and make sure it's in the middle. Pop it like so, and again, just make sure that all sticks down, like so. Okay, pop that back to one side, bring this one over now, just give it one last push there, because this is the tacky glue, so it gets better the more and more it dries there we go and now you just basically want to push in your side ones so they kind of pop you want to push them in and bring everything else together working all of those kind of bits all push them all inside all on the back there pop in whatever it is we've got little sweet treats that are going to go in there and then when you get to the top you want to grab a little bit of sellotape and just seal it up because you're going to cover it then with your peg. Now what I always also have been doing is kind of sandwiching them in between each other and then just squeezing the top. And then with my smaller peg, obviously there'll be sellotape on this, but I need to put stuff in it. Just pop your peg on. So you do need the sellotape. I don't want to put it on because I want to be able to get back in it. Let's just wedge that peg down a bit more. Ah, there we go. Yeah, just really wedge your peg on. Actually, that holds it really well. Let's push that one in a bit more. If you find it's not closing up as well as you would want, just take a little bit more of any bulk off at the very top. It's not going to hurt it at all. You know, this is, even if it's decoration, you need this to kind of close and stay closed. So again, once that's wedged, there you go. How cute. I do love the finished result. And this is like, I was like, I really love this. How am I going to teach this? So I just think they look so cute. Obviously I've kept this really very um, contemporary, very plain and bold and just kept the, you know, the simple green and red, but that's why I thought I'd show the pattern paper with that one. But you could do these in pinks and silvers and all kinds of colors. And I think they make lovely little party favors as well for people to take. So that's the small one. And then again, go to this one, do exactly the same. So just go and work in all of those score lines and then bring it all together making sure the sides go in see that one's gone in and that one's out i mean you can have them out but it looks a bit like a you know odd shaped christmas tree as soon as you pop them in you get that lovely triangle and again just bring up the top there and just kind of you know make sure they all sit in together and then i just literally squeeze the top of it together and with my bigger peg and i wedge it right up the top there yeah, I think that's what I need to do is really push the peg in and actually it works. See, it closes really well. So it's entirely up to you. Have a play around with your pegs, but look at that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and then they can just open up the front there. And um, it was that way, wasn't it? Oh, is it that way around? Yeah, that's my back. I need to turn my peg around. 
thought then I could where's my box opening there we go and then you can just open the box at the front and there's a lovely little there you have it guys so let's bring them both in and you imagine one in front of the other like that they do they look really nice I really love them and I hope you do too a little bit of um yeah attention needed to make these but I do think that it's worth it so practice on some scrap on some copy paper get your template ready stop and start the tutorial and um, bear with me and hopefully you'll get them too so hopefully I haven't left them too late these were almost not going to go up at all so yeah we shall see what happens and what response there is but I'm going to take this moment to say a huge thank you as always I've loved doing this year's Christmas workshop if you've just subscribed or you've just seen this video I will share the whole Christmas workshop um, playlist up there and you can also go to last year's playlist so many different projects I've loved reading all of your comments I've still got a few to go back and go over um, but I love reading them I've loved seeing everything you've made I think we're all agree that the train and the lanterns have been a bit of a hit over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page hundreds of you have made those and I have been sent emails I've been sent little mini videos I've been sent um, invites to other people's craft kind of pages where they've made them with ladies and I've been so humbled and overwhelmed honestly guys it's just I love doing this you know I do so yeah I just want to wish you all a very very Merry Christmas whatever you're doing even if you're not celebrating Christmas you're just taking time with your families and your friends enjoy relax all those lovely things and um, yeah I will be carrying on with normal tutorials this is not the last Christmas one but the Christmas one that is going to go up last I'm not talking away like this on it so it's just a normal Christmas tutorial but that will be going up on Saturday or Monday will be the last Christmas one and then it's just normal really fun tutorials and I've got so many good things for the new year and a couple of good things to tell you but all will be revealed in due course so I don't usually chat for this long so I'm going to stop now um, and uh, yeah once again thank you very much and Merry Christmas thanks for watching bye